history class. It's Thursday the 21st of January and if you joined us last Thursday you'll remember we did World Cup history part one so now this is World Cup history part two. From last week we had two trophies on the board. We had the Jules Rimet trophy which was the first trophy that the world the men's World Cup was played for which if you remember Brazil had won that three times, so got to keep it. So the trophy moved on to the FIFA World Cup trophy. And the first tournament that that um, trophy was played for was 1974, which is where we're going to start part two. But you also see a second trophy there. And that second trophy is the Women's World Cup. And that started in 1991. So we'll talk about that as we go through the second part of World Cup history. So we'll start with 1974. And that was a tournament held in West Germany. If you remember from part one, I said West Germany comes up quite a lot in World Cup history because West Germany were very, very successful when there used to be two countries, West Germany and East Germany. And then um, in the early 90s, they joined together. And 1994 was the first time they played as Germany in a World Cup. We'll come to that a little bit later. But 1974 was held in West Germany. Actually, West Germany and East Germany both qualified for that and played each other in the same group. And in a big upset, East Germany actually beat them. But one of the main stories and the main memories of 1974 was the Dutch team from Holland. Now, they're quite memorable because they had a really bright orange kit and they had a very famous team, played something called Total Football, where all the players moved around. You see that quite a lot today, but they were one of the first teams that were really like that. And they had a very famous player called Johan Cruyff. If you like your football skills, that's who the Cruyff turn is named after. And in that World Cup, there's a great clip of him using that skill. So they're very famous in that World Cup because um, they had such a brilliant team and such brilliant players. But unfortunately, even though they were the favourites, they got all the way to the final, um, but West Germany beat them in the final. So West Germany winning their second World Cup, winning it on home soil. So even though they lost that early game to East Germany, they still managed to beat, beat Holland in the final. So if you remember, every four years there's a World Cup trophy. Um, so World Cup tournament, sorry. So the next World Cup is in 1978, and that tournament was played in Argentina. So West Germany in Europe, Argentina, South America, still moving a lot between South America and Europe with the tournaments. Now again, the host team won that tournament. Um, Argentina were the hosts, they hosted the tournament and they actually won the, won the final against Holland again. So very unlucky losing two World Cup finals in a row. Um, if you ever have a look at that World Cup final, it's quite amazing. Loads of paper and ticker tape and everything coming down from the stands. And it's quite a spectacular um, final to, to look at. So moving on from 1978, you add four years on, you get to 1982, and that's a World Cup in Spain. So back to Europe. And again, the World Cup gets bigger. All the way through this tournament um, for the FIFA World Cup, there's more countries every few years who are able to qualify for it. So in 1982, it grew from 16 teams to 24 teams, so getting bigger. Um, and there's, there's an excellent World Cup, amazing uh, Brazil team in that. Anyone who works on, on our skills, been on the YouTube channel and um, knows the names of the skills. Brazil had a, a fantastic team with Socrates and Zico, and a bit like Holland in 1974, a brilliant team, but they didn't win the World Cup. So a bit, one of the best teams not to win the World Cup. Now in that, in that tournament, Scotland qualified for their third tournament in a row, and it was the third time in a row where they didn't qualify out of their group just on goal difference. So they got enough points from the games, but goal difference stopped them going through, so very unlucky. Now, on the other hand, um, a team that's quite lucky, and they actually won the World Cup in the end, was Italy. Italy's 
first three games in the group, they didn't win one game. They drew all three games and qualified ahead of Cameroon on goals scored, not even goal difference. So they're very lucky to get through and then they made the most of that and won that World Cup. That World Cup is also quite famous for a really bad foul in the semi-finals where the German goalkeeper comes flying out and knocks out one of the French players. That's one of the quite famous moments from the 1982 World Cup. But yeah, Italy won that um, World Cup, beating West Germany again in the final. This would be West Germany being in the final for the first time um, of three in a row, which was quite an amazing achievement. I told you they were a big part of, of World Cup history. So moving on, four years later, and Mexico become the first country to host two World Cups um, in, the, in the men's game. So 1986 was in Mexico. It was supposed to be in Colombia, and Mexico only found out that they would get the World Cup after Colombia pulled out because they couldn't afford to host the tournament. And Mexico did an amazing job because it's one of the the best World Cups, the 1986 one, and they had a really bad earthquake just in the run up to it. So they did amazingly well to host that World Cup. And it's a really, um, really popular one with World Cup fans because it was such a good tournament. Now, in Mexico 1986, there's some very, very famous moments. Um, it's probably most remembered for Maradona, for good things and from an English point of view, for bad things because it's the hand of God where Diego Maradona handballs the ball into the goal, um, which is one of the reasons why England get knocked out. Um, but Maradona's performance in that World Cup was incredible. And he played for Argentina, and Argentina actually won that World Cup um, mostly down to his brilliance. So he did a bit of cheating with his handball, um, to, to score against England, but was also amazing in that World Cup. Um, one of the best ever performances. And they, they get all the way to the final and played against West Germany. So West Germany in the final again. Again, maybe not the best team, but really good at World Cups, really good at progressing through the, the tournament. Because they got beaten by Denmark earlier in the tournament. Um, so even though they lost, they got back together and made it through to the final. And then a brilliant final, which was 3-2 to Argentina, just at the end. So, brilliant World Cup. Mexico hosting the World Cup for the second time, becoming the first team to do that. Then, it's been over to the Americas, been over to Mexico, now comes back to, to Europe, and Italy host the 1990 World Cup. Very famous um, in England, because England did really well, got to the semi-finals, had a, a brilliant team, maybe my favourite um, favourite World Cup for that reason. Um, but in, um, in that World Cup, uh, there was lots of defensive play. There was still something called the back pass rule, where defenders could kick it back to their own goalkeeper and their goalkeeper could pick it up. So there was lots of defensive play, lots of penalty shootouts, lots of very close games, lots of draws. Um, and it was quite a tense World Cup, but not the most exciting, not the most attacking sort of play. But um, West Germany were probably the strongest team. They knocked England out on penalties in the, in the semi-final. And West Germany gets to the final again to play against Italy, uh, sorry, not Italy, um, to play against Argentina. So Argentina had got all the way through to the final, playing very, very uh, defensive football, but managed to get all the way through to the final. And then in a, a very, very ugly, boring final, uh, West Germany managed to beat them 1-0. And it was actually the first time that a team had kept a clean sheet in the World Cup final. So for, for those of you who maybe have heard clean sheet but don't know what it means, it means that the other team hadn't scored. So in all the World Cup finals up to 1990, both teams had scored in the final, which is, uh, is quite amazing. And that would be the last time that West Germany would play in the World Cup as West Germany. After that, all the other World Cups since then, they played uh, as Germany, as a collective team. And again, still very strong as we'll see going through. Now, just after the 1990 World Cup, 
get to 1991, okay? And that's the first time that the Women's World Cup is played for. And um, within women's football, um, some the countries that are generally stronger in the women's game are slightly different than the men's game. And you'll see that by the different winners of the World Cup. So the first World Cup in 1991 was held in China and the winners were the USA. So a bit like I said with Germany and Brazil in the men's game, if you watch for the, the winners as we go through the female World Cup, you'll notice that the USA come up quite a lot in, that, in the history of that tournament. And again, as the Women's World Cup has progressed, there's been, it's got bigger and bigger, more countries have, have entered, similar to, to this, this tournament as well. So moving on from the, the 1990 and 1991, then we get to 1994. And having mentioned America, that um, the 1994 Men's World Cup was held in the USA. And quite interesting because it's a country that wasn't so famous for football or soccer, as they call it. Um, and that, the idea was to try and make the game bigger over there, especially for the men. The female, female um, game was already very strong over there. But because American sports are a little bit different, usually with the basketball, um, American football, um, ice hockey and baseball, they have a different way of looking at, at those, those sports. So the ideas they wanted, they wanted some bigger goals to create so that more goals would be scored. The people on American TV wanted goals to be bigger and they wanted to have the game divided into quarters so they could have more adverts on TV. But um, because the world game, knows football is a 90 minute game with two halves, the goals are the goals, that's the size, that's the game. Um, that's what was agreed and they kept the game the same. Um, because there are lots of, like I said in 1990, lots of draws, lots of uh, penalty shootouts, to try and get teams to be a little bit more attacking is the first time in 1994 that they had three points for a win. So three points for a win to try and make the, the, the games more attacking, which they did um, for, many of, uh, for many of the games, but getting through to the final, uh, it was Brazil against Italy. And even, even with that, trying to develop a more attacking approach, the World Cup final ended up being a draw and it went down to a penalty shootout, which was the first time that the World Cup was decided um, with a penalty shootout. And Brazil ended up being successful in that and winning the penalty shootout. The famous, um, famous image of Baggio, the star player for Italy, shooting really high over the bar, missing the, the deciding penalty and Brazil win. So Brazil become the first country to win the World Cup four times. And that was um, quite an amazing achievement. Um, the next Women's World Cup, if you add four years on, because it's the same as, as the Men's World Cup, then um, four years on is 1995. And that tournament was held in Sweden. So Sweden became the first country to have hosted the Men's World Cup, which they did in 1958, and the Women's World Cup. And again, a little bit, maybe similar sort of climates, cl another with the, the country being very close. Norway were the winners of that World Cup. So again, a little bit different than the men's game. You've got USA so far winning the first uh, Women's World Cup, and then you've got Norway winning the second one. Not countries that have had big success in the men's game. So showing that it's quite different, but also showing that um, being close to home can be quite a help because Norway has a, a border with Sweden, they're very close, to, close together. So Norway winning the second Women's World Cup, and Norway are a very strong country in, in, in women's football. Moving on from the USA tournament, the next World Cup was in, the next Men's World Cup was in France in 1998, and that's the first time where you have 32 countries in a World Cup. So again, expanding the tournament, um, it, the tournament was held in France, in Europe again. France very strong all the way through, and France ended up winning the tournament 3-0 
in the final, beating Brazil. Brazil were very strong all the way through. It's very famous for um, Ronaldo, the Brazilian Ronaldo. You know the name Ronaldo these days with Cristiano Ronaldo, the Portuguese player. But Ronaldo had a bit of a, a problem in the run-up to the final. He was in the team, he was at the team, and then he actually played in the game, but he wasn't quite the amazing player that he had been. So that was a help for France, and France ended up dominating and winning the World Cup 3-0 um, with a very strong performance. Now in that tournament, from an English point of view, it was quite a famous tournament. A young player called Michael Owen, who some of you will have heard of as a player, but he's also on TV a lot talking about the game. He was only 18 in that World Cup and scored an amazing goal against Argentina, which made him very, very famous and very popular. But um, a player called David Beckham, who you will also know about, was also had a, a difficult end to his World Cup because he got a red card in the same game and England got knocked out by Argentina. So quite a dramatic World Cup for, for England. Um, it was also the first tournament where they had something called the golden goal, which means if it, if it was a draw after normal time and they played extra time, if a team scored, that was it, game was over, and um, that one goal was like next goal wins. So France scored that first golden goal that was in the World Cup. They scored against Paraguay to knock them out. Now another quite good stat for France was that they had a defender called Lillian Turan, one of the best defenders in the world, amazing player. And he played 142 times for France, which is lots and lots of games for one for your country. That's quite an amazing amount. And in those games, he only ever scored two goals for France. And they both happened to be in the World Cup semi-final when France were losing um, against Croatia. So quite an amazing thing that he only scored two goals ever for France and they were both in the World Cup semi-final. And they weren't headers from a corner like defenders usually score. They were two really good, really good shots as well. So that's yeah, quite a, an amazing thing that he only scored two and they're both in the semi-final. So the next Women's World Cup was in 1999 and that was held in the USA. So again, they've now hosted the, the Men's World Cup and the Women's World Cup. And again, showing how strong they are in the women's game, the USA were, were champions again. So um, very strong team and showing that they're the most powerful, um, powerful country in women's football, much like Brazil are um, in the history of the Men's World Cup. Yeah. Moving on from there, we now get to the 2002 World Cup, which was the first men's World Cup to be held in Asia and was held in a combination of South Korea and Japan. So they shared the World Cup. Um, so first time that two countries have, have held the World Cup together and the first time it was in Asia. A couple of little things. The fastest ever World Cup goal was scored in that tournament, 10.8 seconds into the game and it was scored by a Turkish player called Hakan Şükür. So yeah, quite amazing to score a goal in the World Cup within 10 seconds. Um, other things that happened in that World Cup, the Brazilian defender Cafu became the first player to play in three World Cup finals in a row. So he played in 94 when Brazil won, 98 when they lost, and then he played again in 2002, and Brazil actually won that World Cup. Um, had an amazing team, and Ronaldo, who had a very um, unfortunate World Cup in 98 was the star, scored two goals in the final. Um, Brazil beat Germany um, in the final 2-0. Ronaldo scored eight goals and had an amazing tournament. Yeah. Coming on to the 2003 World Cup um, in the women's game, that was held in the USA again. They, had, they hosted the World Cup for the second time in a row, and that was because they had to take China's place because China were unable to, to host it at that time. So the USA stepped in, hosted the World Cup. The only time that that's happened in the men's game or the women's game where it's a country has hosted the World Cup twice in a row. And this time there was a new winner and it was Germany. So proving that they're a strong, strong country in both the women's game and the men's game. 
They've made it to the Men's World Cup final in 2002 and won the World Cup in 2003 uh, at the Women's World Cup. So, sticking with the Germany theme, the 2006 Men's World Cup was held in Germany. Um, really good World Cup, amazing stadiums, amazing atmosphere. Um, England, unfortunately, didn't do so well, got knocked out on penalties again. England have got a very bad history in the World Cup of, uh, of penalty shootouts. And with it being in Germany, being the home team, they had a, a successful World Cup again, getting to the semi-finals. But oh, the winners of the World Cup, knocked out Germany in the semi-finals, was Italy. So Italy winning their fourth World Cup, uh, becoming only the second team to win four World Cups. So they, uh, they were very strong in that tournament. In the Women's World Cup, again, um, moving on to 2007, which was the next one. Because China were unable to host the World Cup in 2003, they took over and hosted in 2007 instead. And again, lots of Germany, Germany, Germany. Germany won the 2007 Women's World Cup as well. So two times in a row, very strong. Um, and yeah, showing that they're they're pretty much dominating, hosting World Cups, winning World Cups, um, being successful, getting to finals. Um, very, very strong um, in the World Game. Next World Cup in men's football was in South Africa. First time that World Cup had been held in an African country. So really, um, a really important thing, really important to help try and develop um, the game across the world. And very exciting, very colourful World Cup. Started really well. South Africa, the host team, won their first ever game um, at the World Cup in their first in their opening match, which was an um, amazing achievement. It's always good if the, the host country does well. And that country, uh, so that tournament, was very famous for um, how good the Spanish were in that World Cup. They were ultimately became the champions. Of, of that World Cup, the 2010 winners, Spain beating Holland in the final. Holland getting to their third World, uh, World Cup final and losing it again. So, yeah, unlucky again to lose another World Cup final. Spain were the dominant team. But an interesting fact in that World Cup, there was only one team that was unbeaten in that tournament. And very strange is New Zealand. New Zealand played three games in the group and drew them all. And every other team in that World Cup lost at least one game. So, yeah, quite interesting. Only New Zealand were undefeated in the 2010 World Cup. So, moving on to 2011 in the Women's World Cup. That was held in Germany. Japan, first time winners of the World Cup. And um, quite amazing, really. None of the win winners apart from Germany of the Women's World Cup have won the Men's World Cup. Um, so yeah, a very a different winner um, in Japan. The 2014 World Cup was hosted in Brazil, showing that again, World Cup moving around to different continents now, not so much shared between Europe and South America, but now Asia, Africa, South America, Europe, and then the following one will be in Asia again. So moving more around the world now as, as the game gets bigger. So Brazil hosted the World Cup for the second time and Germany were the winners of that World Cup, becoming the first European team to win a World Cup in South America. So that was quite an achievement. And we see it a lot now, but that was the first World Cup to have goal line technology. So it could tell you if a ball went over the line or not. You didn't have to just use your eyes as the referee and the assistant referee. You got a beep that would help you and tell you if the um, ball had crossed the line. And like I said, Germany did very well to win that World Cup, and it was the fourth time that Germany had won the World Cup. Germany, West Germany had won the World Cup. So, amazing achievement. So as it stands um, at the moment, you've got Brazil who've won five, and then Germany and Italy who've both won four. So, three very strong countries in the men's game. In 20. 15 in for the Women's World Cup, that was held in Canada, so a new country hosting the World Cup. And again, 
This was the first time where 24 teams had qualified for the World Cup. Like I said, expanding, expanding um, in both the women's game and the men's game with the tournaments. So 24 teams played in 2015 and the USA were winners of the tournament again. So that was the third time that the Americans had won the World Cup. Again, really dominant um, within those tournaments. So if you remember from part one, we talked about um, and we mentioned where the most recent World Cup was. Um, that was in Russia. So the most recent Men's World Cup was in Russia in 2018. Um, again, remember every four years there's a World Cup. Um, England had a really good tournament, got to the semi-finals. So sometimes that helps you to remember a little bit more about what happened in the World Cup, living in England. And if England do well, you, you're more aware of it. Um, but overall in that World Cup, the strongest team was probably France, you could maybe say Croatia, who got to the, the World Cup final. Unfortunately, Croatia were better than England in the semi-final and knocked us out. And then they got to the final against France and France ended up winning that World Cup. Now, the 2018 World Cup was the first time that VAR was used. So V-A-R. Now we see that in the game, it's on TV video assistant referee to help make decisions and maybe because of that there were more penalties and also more goals scored after 90 minutes in that recent World Cup so maybe VAR slowing the game down the time goes past 90 minutes and then people are scoring more goals late in the games and also because there was VAR um, the referees were able to see the action back and give more penalties. So that's something that we'll probably see in future World Cups as well, if VAR is still there. Now, just to finish off the Men's World Cup for now, the next Men's World Cup is gonna be the first time that it's played in the winter. And that's gonna be in a country called Qatar. Again, moving to a different continent, and it's going to be in Asia. So that brings us up to date for the Men's World Cup, so that's taking you through all of the history, different winners, different hosts, and some different facts about that. Now, the most recent uh, Women's World Cup was in 2019, and that was held in France, and familiar winners were the USA. So again, they've won four out of the eight World Cups, so half of the World Cups played um, for the Women's World Cup, been won by the USA. So, uh, really dominant performances by them. So, um, the next Women's World Cup, again, moving continents again, expanding um, the tournament, that's gonna be held in Australia and New Zealand. And if you add on the four years, you get to 2023. Now, having gone through the history of the World Cup, we'd now like you to do a little bit of work and a little bit of a look back yourself at the history of the World Cup and look at some, some of the details. So the assignment we'd like everyone to do is we would like you to pick the player who you think has been the greatest ever World Cup player. So you can choose anyone you want, could be from the Women's World Cup, could be from the Men's World Cup, okay? So you probably need to go and do a little bit of research on that. And then what we'd like you to do is write a paragraph on, on um, that player and explain why you think they are the best player to ever play in the World Cup. So you might write um, one of my favourite players for England, Paul Gascoigne. So I would write Paul Gascoigne, greatest ever player of the World Cup, and then I would write a paragraph about why I think he is the greatest ever player to play in the World Cup. Okay? And then what I would need to do is I complete that assignment, and if you look on the screen now, there's a WhatsApp number. So write about the player, take a picture of the paragraph you've written of the page that you've written it down on and then send that picture to the WhatsApp number on the screen and then our coaches will have a look and there'll be some little prizes awarded for that. Yeah. So 
So good luck with those uh, with the assignment. Um, hopefully you know a little bit more about the World Cup. There's quite quite a lot of detail in this uh, part two because there's more more tournaments and also you've got the men's World Cup and the women's World Cup. So hopefully you know a little bit more. Hopefully you uh, enjoy looking back at some of the players. You can pick the one who you think's the best and then tell us why you think they're the best. All right. So good luck and uh, we'll see you tomorrow for science. Hopefully.